Hello there. In this question, we're given three complex numbers, z1, z2 and z3, and we're given an equation where 2 over z1 is equal to 1 over z2 plus 1 over z3. We're told the value of z2 and z3. We have to find z1 and write it in the form a plus bi. Okay, well there's a number of ways of doing this, um, but the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to add the two fractions on the right hand side by getting a common denominator so that I get a single fraction on the right hand side. So my first task is to add the two fractions on the right hand side. Okay, so let's just write out what they are. It's 2 plus 3i is z2 and then we're adding 1 over 3 minus 2i. So my common denominator is the product of those two and on the top I will have 1 times 3 minus 2i plus 1 times 2 plus 3i. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that out on the top I just get 3 minus 2i plus 2 plus 3i. On the bottom I'm going to use the FOIL technique to multiply it out and the FOIL technique is the first, then the outside, then the inside, and the last. So the first will be 2 by 3, will be 6. The outside will be uh, 2 by minus 2i, which is minus 4i. The inside is 3i by 3, which is 9i. And the last is 3i by minus 2i, so that's minus 6i squared. Let's simplify the top, and I get 5 plus i. Simplify the bottom. Now minus 6i squared is minus 6 by minus 1. So that's plus 6. If I add plus 6 to the other 6, I get 12. And add my 2i terms, and I get plus 5i. So now I have a single fraction on the right-hand side. So my equation is 2 over z1 is equal to 5 plus i over 12 plus 5i. That's going to become 2 over a plus bi. And the right-hand side stays the same. Now, whenever you have two fractions that are equal to each other, a useful thing to do is to cross-multiply. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I have 2 multiplied by 12 plus 5i. And that's going to be equal to a plus bi multiplied by 5 plus i. So I'm going to multiply out both sides and then match the real and the imaginary parts. So on the left I get 24 plus 10i. On the right I will use the FOIL technique again. So the first is 5 by a, so that's 5a. The outside is a times i. The inside is 5bi. And the last is bi times i, so that's plus bi squared, which again is plus b times minus 1. So let's tidy that up a bit. Let's get the real parts and the imaginary parts. The real parts is 5a minus b. And then the imaginary part is plus a plus 5b times i. So what we have now is we have this is real. And this is imaginary. And on the left hand side we have 24 plus 10i. And of those we also have that the 24 is real. And the 10 is imaginary. So we match the two real parts and match the two imaginary parts. And we should get two simultaneous equations. So the first equation is 24 is equal to 5a minus b. And the second equation is 10 is equal to a plus 5b. Okay, so we have two straightforward linear equations with two unknowns, a and b. I just need to solve those. So let's uh, multiply this one here by 5 so that I get 5a. And that gives me 50 is equal to 5a plus 25b, and uh, let's change the signs in fact. So minus 50, 
is equal to minus 5a minus 25b. Now we just combine that with the other equation. So um, let's write over here 24 equal to 5a minus b minus 50 is equal to minus 5a minus 25b. So we add those two together and these cancel. And I get minus 26b is equal to minus 26. Therefore, b is equal to 1. Uh, and now we just substitute that in. Uh, so let's do that here. So therefore, 24 is equal to 5a minus 1. Therefore, I bring the 1 over. You have 25 is equal to 5a. Therefore, a is equal to 5. So we have the value of the two coefficients, a and b, which means I can write z1, finally, as a plus bi, so that's 5 plus 1i. And there's my answer. Okay, it took quite a long time, but it was fairly straightforward in the end. Now, just uh, remember, there are other ways of doing that question. Uh, the way I did it was just one, one such way. Um, you may have found a different way, but that's perfectly fine. There's lots of ways of doing it. Now, the next question, what have we got? Let w be a complex number such that w raised to the power of n is 1, and that w is not 1, and s is the sum of 1 plus w plus w squared plus all the way up as far as w to the power of n minus 1. Use the formula for the sum of a finite geometric series to write the value of s in its simplest form. OK, well, we need the sum of a finite geometric series. So let's go to the tables, sequences and series on page 22. And you'll find that the sum of a finite geometric series, s, n, is given as a times 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r, where a is the first term and r is the common ratio. Well, we have definitely a geometric series because 1 times w gives us w, w times w gives us w squared, so we have that r is w. If you multiply any term by the common ratio, you should get the succeeding term, the term afterwards, and that's what we get here. If you like, you can divide a term by the term before it to get the common ratio as well. So a, the first term is 1, so we need that, and we also need the common ratio, which is w. So now let's put all of that into our formula, and we get s n, the sum of n terms, which there is n, n terms in this because it goes from uh, w to the power of naught up as far as w to the n minus 1. Uh, that's going to be a, which is 1, times 1 minus w to the n over 1 minus w. Okay, now what we're told that w to the n is 1. So I can substitute that into my formula and I get that sn is equal to 1 times 1 minus 1 over 1 minus w, which is 1 times 0 over 1 minus w, which is 0 over 1 minus w, and that, of course, is 0. So it doesn't matter what w is, as long as it's uh, some complex number, which isn't 1, and it's, it's a complex number such that when we raise it to the power of n, we get 1. So um, n could be any number as well. Uh, then the sum, well, n is a, is a, a whole number because we have a sum of n terms, so it must be a whole number. Then the sum of those n terms will actually just add up to zero. So that's what our formula is telling us, and there's the answer. So therefore, s, s in fact is the sum of those n terms, so s is zero, is our answer. So that completes this video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.